welcome back to my channel, welcome to today's video. I'm going to make a chicken casserole today and because it's a really simple, almost a cheat version of any casserole, I thought I'd bring you along for the ride, show you how to make it. Really straightforward recipe, quite economical. You can tailor the ingredients to suit yourself obviously. I've got chicken breast fillets and these are frozen. I've got a bag of new potatoes, a bag of carrots, I've got some leeks there. There's a pack of frozen bacon medallions that I dredged out of the freezer. There's a tin of chicken soup for a little and then a few uh, herbs and spices there. And that's all I'm putting in. Now, as I said, you can tailor the ingredients of your chicken casserole to suit yourself. You can change the veg, you can put in different quantities, it is entirely up to you. It will taste just as good. I'm going to use about half of the bag of new potatoes and because these are all fairly small as you can see in a similar size I'm going to throw them in as they are. If they were very varying in sizes I would probably cut some in half to make them all approximately the same size but it wouldn't really matter because this is going to be in my slow cooker for about 10 hours so even if they were large they would still cook all the way through. So I've used about half the bag of new potatoes and uh, popped those in the base of the slow cooker when I thought about it afterwards, I regretted putting those in the bottom. I should have put the chicken in first and I'll explain why in a second. Moved on to cutting the leeks. The important thing with leeks is to remember that as they grow up through the soil, they collect soil within their layers along the way. So I topped and tailed them just off to fetch the colander there. But you need to cut a long slit down the side of each leek, which enables the rings to open up. And I do that before I then cut them into the rings. Then all the pieces will go into the colander and they need to be thoroughly washed under running water to wash out the grit that grows up between the layers as the leek stretches itself towards the sun. I've got a bit poetic there, I didn't see that coming, did you? And here is an example of that grit that's grown up between the layers of the leek. This is why you want to wash that off. You don't, I mean, a bit of dirt won't hurt you, but you don't particularly want to be eating that. And sometimes it literally can be gritty, so you don't want to find a bit of grit in your casserole when you're chewing away and think, what on earth is that in my mouth? All of these pieces go into the colander and then it gets washed under running water, just so that I'm sure that it's all clean before it goes into the slow cooker with the potatoes. Next, I'm going to dice up my carrots and I've accelerated the footage for this because it's not really instructional, is it? Take carrot, take knife, apply knife to carrots, make carrots into small pieces, pop them into the slow cooker. Really not that tricky. I topped and tailed them, but I didn't peel them because my carrots tend to come washed these days from the supermarket in a bag. I prefer them not to come in the plastic, but so be it. So my carrots are in and now I'm going to add my chicken. As I said earlier in the video, I put my chicken in at this stage and regretted it and you'll see why. I'm going to have to attempt to bury my chicken underneath the potatoes and carrots that I'd already put in. If I'd just put it in first, I wouldn't have had this problem. The reason I want my chicken to be lower is because these are frozen chicken breasts. They're straight out of the freezer. I haven't defrosted them. You can cook meat from frozen in your slow cooker. It's going to be in there such a very long time that it will be cooked thoroughly by the time I want to eat it. I began this recipe at about nine o'clock in the morning and we didn't eat dinner until seven o'clock that night. So it cooked for a solid 10 hours on high. I put it on high because of the frozen meat. If the meat had been already defrosted, I could have cooked it on low for that time. The bacon as well, you can see me opening the bacon medallions here. These are frozen, hence why they are slipping around on the chopping board there as I head off to the bin with the wrapper. I'm just literally going to hack these into lumps using the knife and throw these in as well. But I did wish that I had put the frozen meat lower down. And the reason for that is that if it's submerged in the cooking liquid for the entire time, it will get a more even cook. So I put these pieces in and then had to rummage around and bury them underneath what I'd already put in. It simply would have made a lot more sense to put them in first. So it's time now to add some flavour. At the moment, this casserole will be really, really bland. I'm beginning with onion powder. Does anybody else's onion powder always dry up like this? Here I am getting the handle of a spoon to try and bash it about a bit and try and get some out. Now, again, when it comes to the herbs that you're going to put in and the, and the flavours, you can be as generous or as, as miserly as you like with this. The flavour of your casserole is entirely up to you. And I can't tell you measurements because I did this by eye. I threw in some onion powder. I threw in some paprika chicken seasoning as well to give it a bit more flavour. Next up we're looking at mustard powder. I think I used about a tablespoon of mustard in there maybe. And then it's simply black pepper 
and I'll be back with the salt in a second. Next to go in is this tin of Lidl's chicken soup. I would have preferred mushroom soup. There wasn't any in the shop, I bought chicken soup. At the end of the day, this is a cheats casserole. It will taste just as good. I'm gonna put in the entire can of chicken soup and then I'm off to the tap. I'll fill that can up with cold water to the brim and pop that in as well. So you've got a double can measure of liquid in there. It will be plenty. It doesn't look enough when you first put it in, but you need to remember that my chicken breasts have gone in frozen, so you'll get a little bit of moisture coming out then, and it will be absolutely plenty of moisture. When I came back to this later in the day, there was plenty of moisture in there. So although it doesn't look like it's going to cover my food, don't worry about that, it will be fine. I did my best to give it a bit of a stir to combine the flavourings and stuff in there, but I was trying not to uncover the chicken again. As you can see, I managed to get that chicken piece back to the top, which was not my plan. On with the lid, and this went on the high setting for 10 hours. As I'd said earlier, if my meat had been defrosted, it could have been cooked on the low setting. But as my meat was frozen, the high setting it was for 10 hours. And by the magic of editing, 10 hours later, here is my cooked casserole. It's been bubbling away. Anthony's given it a stir a couple of times during the day for me because I was out at work. But it's beautifully cooked. Every piece in there is soft. The carrots are cooked through, the potatoes are cooked through. But I do want to thicken the liquid slightly. So I'm gonna put in what's called a corn flour slurry and I'm sure everybody who's watching has heard of this before. You simply dissolve corn flour into water until you have a slurry, a thick, gloopy liquid, uh, probably the consistency of double cream. And that gets poured in and given a good stir and I left it for probably about another half an hour after the cornflour slurry went in. And I'm just demonstrating here that everything is cooked. You can see the potatoes slice in half easily, the carrots are cooked and the chicken is beautifully cooked on the inside. But while I was cooking my broccoli, I left the lid off for probably 10 to 15 minutes and that helped it to thicken up a bit further. It helps some of the uh, steam to evaporate and the liquid to just thicken up that bit more. And here we are, ready to serve. There it is, one beautiful dish of chicken casserole with a large portion of broccoli. Sure, it's good for me. It's absolutely delicious. It's really quite economical. Running your slow cooker is cheaper than running an oven. You can run a slow cooker for the same price as a light bulb for a day. So get your slow cooker out of the cupboard, cook yourself up some autumn food and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.